Hello, I'm Matthew, and today I'm going to give you an overview of Cubes OS. What is Cubes OS? The website tagline promises a reasonably secure operating system. The approach Cubes uses is security by compartmentalization. Different security domains are implemented as separate virtual machines. For example, you may decide that everything related to managing your personal finances belongs in its own security domain. You don't want any other activity reading email, general web browsing, writing in a word processor, or doing your job, to be able to introduce any malware or security vulnerabilities that would compromise your financial data. What you want is a virtual machine with your finance program and a web browser that you only ever use to visit your bank's website, never anything else. For general web browsing, you want a separate virtual machine running a web browser that has no way of talking to or accessing data on the personal finance virtual machine. You can take this approach with existing desktop virtualization solutions like VMware, Parallels, and VirtualBox, but it isn't very convenient to quickly create and manage VMs like this. If after you've set up your VMs, you decide you need a new application, like a word processor, that would be useful in all of your security domains, you would have to go through each of your VMs and install that word processor. Similarly, if a new version of the web browser or word processor is released, you would need to upgrade each copy in all of your VMs. So Cubes makes a major contribution to the practicality of security by compartmentalization. It provides an operating system that out of the box makes it easy to manage and use a large number of virtual machines to implement your different security domains. The user interface is seamless where it should be seamless, but provides strict security separation between domains to keep data isolated. But enough talk, what does Cubes look like from the user's perspective? Day-to-day -day usage of Cubes is just like regular Linux desktop use, with one key difference. Applications run in different security domains. Here I have two web browsers running, one for work tasks and one for general, untrusted web browsing. Even though these are integrated into the same desktop, nothing I do in one can affect the other. Cubes always puts the security domain label and a colored border around Windows, so I always know what security domain I'm working in. Over here, I have the work label. It's in a blue framed window. And over here, I have the untrusted label in a red framed window. So let's create a couple of bookmarks in this work browser. Uh, let's say I use Gmail for my email at work. We'll bookmark that. And try that again, bookmark that. And we use GitHub for source control. So I'll add a bookmark for GitHub. Also go ahead and log in to GitHub uh, so it should remember uh, who we are and keep us logged in. There we go. So we're logged into GitHub. If I don't do this, it'll keep prompting me. Um, so that's my work browser. Now let's look over at this untrusted browser. Um, so untrusted meaning just you know general web browsing. I don't want to have access to any files in any other security domains. Uh, so let's say I like to watch YouTube videos. We'll go to YouTube and go ahead and bookmark that. And we can uh, keep up with some of the news. So let's go to BBC News and add a bookmark for the news. So as you can see already, they are clearly separate. Uh, you know, separate browser instances, the bookmarks in one aren't popping up in the other one. Uh, let's go ahead and close these down. And to start them up, we'll see uh, another one of Cubes' features. Each domain is listed in my applications menu. So if I want to start that work browser again, I come into the work domain and start up the Google Chrome browser in work. And as we expect, uh, it's back up here. It's in a blue frame. I have the bookmarks that I created in the work domain. And when GitHub loads, uh, you'll notice I'm still logged in as myself to GitHub. That cookie was saved. So everything in the work domain uh, is working just like we would expect. Similarly, I'll open the untrusted browser. So again, just for my general purpose web browsing, and we still have the bookmarks that I set in this domain. And if I go to GitHub, you'll see I'm not logged in, uh, again, even though I logged in over here. So they really are separate. 
um, but they do remember everything that happened within that domain. So anything that happens in my untrusted web browsing domain uh, cannot compromise anything in my work security domain. And similarly, anything in work can't touch anything in untrusted. There's no data sharing between the two security domains. So that's nice. Let's look at this a little bit further. I'll close these web browsers and let's open a word processor. So uh, I'll use my personal domain, open up LibreOffice Writer, and let's start writing, say, a letter to grandma. Dear grandma, it was great to see you over the holidays. I'll tuck that over there. Uh, let's go ahead and save this. I'll call it letter to grandma. Uh, and now, again, let's say for work, I need to work on that business plan I've been putting off. So I'll open the word processor in the work domain and confidential business plan, install Cubes OS, something, and then of course, we profit at the end. And we'll save that as biz plan. So one thing to notice now is if I go to open files, in the work domain, I only see the business plan. I don't have that letter to grandma anywhere. Similarly, in personal domain, we do have letter to grandma in the file system. Uh, we don't have the business plan document. So again, we have the data separation here that you probably expect by now. Um, let's look at that from another perspective. We can confirm that by opening the file browser in the personal domain. And because it's in the personal domain, it can see anything else that happened in the personal domain. So there's lettered grammar in the file browser. And just to complete that, we'll take a look over in the work domain, and there's the business plan. So everything in the domain has access to everything else that happens in the domain, but they have no visibility into anything outside of the domain. I also can't just drag files between security domains. Uh, again, these are running in different virtual machines. They're just all being drawn in the single integrated desktop environment. But sometimes I might need to uh, actually send something across. Let's say I decide that this letter to grandma I'm going to use as a, uh, a form letter template for some business letters, and I, I don't want to redo the work I've done over here. So Cubes does add some convenience features to help you do those sorts of things. I can actually copy this file to another app VM just by right-clicking on it and choosing Copy to Other App VM. And the destination domain is Work. Now it's going to prompt me, do I want to allow the personal domain to execute the file copy operation to the domain Work? Now I'll say yes to that, to grant it permission to do that once. And uh, that's a good way so that you know, scripts and applications can't break down the separation by, uh, between the domains by trying to do that automatically. You're always going to get the outer management system of, of cubes prompting you for confirmation for that, um, that operation. And we can see now in this work domain, I have lettered grammar. And I can you know, copy that around. I can move it to my documents folder in the work domain. And now when I open it, we're in the blue work domain, and I can do the editing that I want to do. So we can close all of that now. So let's just remind ourselves of the practical effects of this. Uh, if I'm browsing in the web browser in the personal domain, let's say that's where I read my personal email, what happens if I accidentally end up picking up malware or being exposed to a security vulnerability? In a normal operating system, that malware could get access to my work data as well, such as that business plan, because it's all on the same computer. But with cubes, the data over in the work domain is safe from any sort of compromise in the personal or any other domain. There's simply no way software running in one domain can access data or spread malware to the other domains. Uh, so the clipboard operates in a similar way. Let me pop open documents again so we can demonstrate this. Whatever's in the clipboard in one domain stays in that domain. So I copy that. Of course, I can paste that. But if I go over to the work domain and I paste, there's nothing in the clipboard. That's good so that if you're working on a, a document over here and you're copying text around, 
software, uh, malware, compromised software, and other domains can't steal that data from the clipboard just because you happen to be copying and pasting and duplicating some information. But again, sometimes you want to move that around. So once I copy it into the clipboard on the personal domain, I can press a special cube shortcut, Control-Shift-C, and you can see down here it tells me that the cube's clipboard fetched from VM personal. So now whatever was in the personal clipboard is now in the cubes clipboard. It's still not available to any other domains. So in the process of doing this, again, other domains can't steal any of that data. I have to go to the specific domain that I want to grant access to that clipboard data, press Control Shift V, and now cubes has copied that data into that domain's own clipboard. So now that I'm in the work domain, I've copied that to the work clipboard. Applications just see it as clipboard data, and when I paste it, it shows up as you'd expect. So that's pretty neat. You're able to do the convenient sorts of things you do when you're working with desktop applications, uh, but you have those strict security boundaries between everything to prevent any kind of compromise of data between domains. So Cubes also has another neat convenience feature to increase security called disposable VMs. Let's say you're opening a document that's potentially compromised or visiting your website that you really don't trust. Uh, you probably don't want to do that even in the isolation of an existing security domain. It's great to uh, you know, open something in the personal domain and it can't compromise the work domain, but if I open something in the personal domain, it could compromise other data inside of the personal domain. So that's where disposable VMs come in. They come into existence for a single task with no access to anything else on the system. Then they're completely gone once the task is done. So let's pop open a disposable web browser. I'll go to this disposable VM, open up Firefox. Now at this point, the VM uh, is being created in the background. And so I haven't done this recently, it's actually creating a new disposable VM image. Normally it actually starts up uh, much more quickly than this. All right, so now it's starting up that disposable VM and the web browser pops open. Uh, so you can see the tag here is disp1, disposable VM1, and we have a browser and I can you know do whatever I want in this browser. Uh, we can bookmark this. So recently bookmarked. Um, let's go back to say BBC. Add that to my favorites. Let's see, where did this put it? There they are, unsorted bookmarks. Uh, similarly, you could log into site, save cookies, all of that. Now, when I close this, that disposable VM is being deleted. It's gone. Everything that happened in that session, any files that it may have tried to save into that VM's disk, it's all gone. So if I open up the disposable VM web browser again, it's actually creating another new disposable virtual machine. Uh, this time it's disposable VM2. And if we look at our bookmarks, Let's view that bookmark sidebar again. There's nothing in unsorted bookmarks. Uh, it's just a new, fresh, completely empty Firefox uh, and a new VM started from the original template. So that's kind of nice. Uh, but there's another way to use disposable VMs. Let's say you're in your work domain reading email and you get a PDF from uh, an outside source, uh, maybe an invoice or something. Uh, now, I don't have any email set up, but uh, we can download a PDF from, uh, let's say I know we can download plenty of PDFs straight from the massive document production artifice that is the government. So rather than opening that PDF, because again, I don't know if that PDF uh, contains some scripts that have malware, there have been vulnerabilities before where simply opening a PDF uh, could run some code that infects your system. I'm going to save the PDF. So that saves in my downloads folder. And when I open the file browser, go into downloads here, there's a right click option for open and disposable VM. So I'll go ahead and click that. And when I do that, Cubes will create 
another new one of those disposable VMs and it will copy just that file over into the disposable VM and open it up in that disposable VM. So you can see that it's blue because I spawned it from the work tag, but the tag up here in the title bar is disposable three. So this PDF browser is running in its own isolated disposable virtual machine. Anything that it does to the system is just going to be forgotten, wiped out as soon as I close it. So I'll do that. And the file is still sitting in the work domain, but again, it was never executed, it was never opened. Uh, nothing was done with this file in the work domain. So the work domain is secure from any potential problems with that PDF. This also works for editing. Uh, if you had, a, uh, say, an Office a word processing document, you could open that up and actually edit it in the disposable VM that it opened in. When you save it, Cubes will copy the changes, copy the, you know, the updated saved file back to the domain it came from, the work domain in this case. Uh, so you can make those edits. You can change the file and then maybe send it back to the person with your updates who sent it to you. But you never actually had to operate on that file or open that file in the domain that you didn't want to risk compromising with anything nasty that might be in the file. Uh, you know, Note that it's only a copy of the file. The file itself that's copied, at no point is the file ever opened in the source security domain. Well, in brief, that's how Cubes works. It's largely the same as using a normal single domain operating system, but with a couple of modifications to ensure strict separation of the security domains. And uh, if you do have a compromise of some sort in one domain, that compromise is isolated to the domain that it happens in. Now, as I said in the introduction, there are a couple of neat things Cubes does for you to make this easy to manage and efficient to manage. So let's take a look under the covers. If I click this blue Q, we see the Cubes VM Manager. Uh, it runs in DOM0, uh, Domain0. Uh, that's the Zen, which is the virtualization hypervisor this is built in. It's the Zen term for uh, the sort of outer management domain that's in control of everything. So here I can see which virtual machines are running. In this case, there are some services, uh, some network firewall services, and then there are my app VMs or my security domains. So that untrusted personal work, I can see the color of their label, uh, and I can see how much CPU, how much memory, those sorts of things. Uh, so when I launch an application in the work domain, because it's already running, the VM is already running, it just pops open quickly like you'd expect. Uh, I have another domain called Vault, and we can see that's not running at the moment. But if I open an application in it, Cubes will go ahead and start that VM automatically for me. It shows up in the running VM list. And then that is now a freshly booted uh, VM, and the application pops open in it. Again, now that that VM is running, I can just open up that application again, and it pops up quickly because the virtual machine is already running. Uh, if I shut down a VM, I can do that here. And we can see the personal VM is shutting down. Um, but again, if I want to do something in the personal domain, I don't need to worry about starting it. I just launch applications and Cube starts it up for me. So that's pretty convenient. Again, on a day-to-day -day basis, you don't really need to worry about what VMs are running, starting them, figuring out, managing all of that. Uh, you know, the fact that all these applications are running in VMs is really transparent to the user, except occasionally just a longer pause on startup if you're working in a, a VM that you haven't, you know, yet had to use that security domain since the system was last started up. Now, note that each of these has a template associated with it. This is, I think, where Cubes really makes things convenient. Uh, if I click this button up here, I can see all of the VMs that aren't currently running. And these are the template VMs here. And then down here, again, we have those app VMs that are based on those templates. So there's a template for a Fedora 23 system. There's a template for a Debian 8 system. Uh, there's a couple templates related to the Tor network and the Hunix anonymous OS, which we'll look at in a little bit. And then everything I'm actually running is based on one of those templates. So the way that Cubes manages file systems for each VM is that when you start a VM, it gets a fresh copy of the file system from the template, except for the user's home directory. So everything I save in my home directory in a security domain is preserved, but the rest of the system can be thought of as temporary. 
What this means is that if I want to install new applications available in all security domains or update the version of software, I just need to install it in the template VM. Next time I restart the application VMs, they'll reflect the latest changes to the template. But first, let's see what happens if I just install something in an app VM. Let's say I need to make some figures for technical documentation I'm working on at work. I use Xfig to do that, but it's not installed. So let's open the terminal in the work domain. And we'll just go ahead and install Xfig. We'll tell it yes. And it will download and install that. Great, looks good. So now, yep, I have Xfig. I can launch it. There it is. I can do my drawing and we'll quit. So since I did that in work, uh, I don't have it in personal. Let's just go over to personal really quick, which Xfig, yeah, it's not there. And uh, Let's demonstrate this a little bit further. So let's go ahead and stop this work VM. So that's shut down now. Uh, and let's open a terminal in work, which will start the VM back up. And open the terminal. Now, Xfig's gone. Again, because I restarted the VM, everything outside of my home directory is reset. So perhaps surprising, but also often a useful feature. If I want to try an application before really committing to installing it in the template, all I need to do is give it a dry run in an app VM first. It also means that if something nasty does try to install itself, a clean environment is just a VM reboot away. But now that I know I want Xfig permanently installed and also available to other environments, Maybe I need to draw a map to my house for a party invitation in the personal domain. I'll install it in the template. Needless to say, making poor decisions about what to put in the template could compromise the security of all of your app VMs. Uh, but in this case, we're installing a package, a signed package from the operating system distributors repository. So we'll go ahead and make the decision that this is an okay thing to do uh, and for this application to be available in all of the VMs that are off of the Fedora 23 template. So now I've actually started the template. Uh, we're editing the Fedora 23 template here. So I'll do the same thing. We can install Xfig and tell it, yes, go ahead and do that. You notice while we're doing this that the Cubes VM Manager has some new icons. It has this little uh, circle arrow thing going on. If I mouse over that, it says the template VM must be stopped before changes from its current session can be picked up by this VM. So it recognizes that we're making some changes to the template and anything that's running that's based on that template, uh, it knows it's going to have to update. So that's done. I can go ahead and close that and let's shut down that VM. So when I shut down the template, those new changes are available to anything based on the template. Now the gray arrows have changed to green. It says the VM must be restarted for its file system to reflect the template's recent committed changes. Great, so next time I start any of these VMs that are based on that Fedora template, I'll have Xfig available. Right now I only need it for work. So I'll shut down the work VM. It's fine to let these other ones keep running because uh, right now all that means is they just don't have Xfig available. And next time I start the work VM, it gets that new copy of the template for everything but my home directory. And remember last time we looked at work after the restart Xfig was gone, but now it's back. So the other cool thing is how you manage this application menu. So I don't want to launch a terminal and then have to type Xfig every time. I just want Xfig to be in my menus here. So each domain has a option to add more shortcuts. And this brings up a window that lists the installed applications. I can see Xfig here. And I'll just bring that over to selected and hit OK. So 
And now under the work menu, I have Xfig as an option. So again, now all of the VMs, all the domains based on the Fedora 23 template, I could go in and say, okay, for personal, I occasionally use Xfig, so I want it in my menu and add the shortcut there as well. Now, sometimes you might not want all of that application information to be shared. Uh, you might not want changes outside the home directory to be reset all the time. Uh, or you might have applications that the application itself is maybe sensitive and should only exist isolated within a domain. So Cubes lets you do that through what are called standalone VMs. And they're easy to create. When you create one, it makes a copy of the template once. And then from there on out, it is its completely own file system. Updates, applications, uh, any system-wide configuration within the VM is done entirely within that VM. Uh, so you just hit new VM, choose the template. We'll call this isolated. Oh, that's confusing because they're all isolated, but you just check standalone and that will create one of those standalone VMs based on that template. So while we're here, we can see a couple of other options for AVMs. This is again, where you give it that label, you give it what color you want the window borders to be. Uh, you can pick that template. Uh, you can also choose how this VM connects to the network, uh, which firewall service it uses. So the default firewall is uh, just sort of a regular NAT based router. Uh, but then by default with Cubes 1.3, it also comes with the Hunix router uh, gateway box. So this is a virtual machine that routes all of its traffic through the Tor network. And again, we'll look at that uh, in a little bit. Um, so while we're here, let's also just look at the other settings we have available for VMs. Uh, so we have, again, the network VM. You can set how much of the uh, space is available for the home directory. Uh, so again, you can't get a domain compromised with malware that just tries to fill up your entire hard drive to make your computer unusable. Uh, you can restrict that home directory space that's persistent. Memory and CPU settings typical to virtual machine type systems. Uh, this is interesting that you can set when you launch a disposable VM, like when I opened that PDF viewer in a disposable VM from this VM, how do you want it to connect to the network? So maybe you're getting a, you know, a PDF or something through email that you're not even sure if it's going to try and go out to the internet and maybe do something, uh, uh, you know, abuse or try and do a denial of service against some, uh, some site on the internet. And you don't want that tied to your, your office or your home IP address as abuse coming from your IP address. You could actually have a domain that normally connects to the internet through your local connection. But when you uh, launch documents to view or edit documents inside of it in disposable VMs, you actually want those set to route all the traffic through the Tor network so that it can't as easily be traced back to you. Um, so that's just kind of neat. Firewall rules, allowing or denying particular types of access. Devices, if you get into situations where you need to tie a particular hardware device. Um, so that's just getting into sort of the edge case VM stuff. We saw the applications menu. This is where you're able to choose which of the installed applications appear in the launcher menu for that domain. So pretty straightforward, pretty neat stuff. Gives you a lot of convenient ways to manage what otherwise would be uh, a somewhat burdensome task of managing all those VMs. And we can see just how quick and easy it is. If I'm working on some new, uh, maybe really super secret project at work, all the data for that should be isolated. You know, I can do secret project. Uh, maybe I'm using some software that's only available for Debian, so I can choose a different Debian template. And we'll make this uh, purple color, say OK. And then in really just a matter of seconds, Cubes just created a new VM using the Debian 8 template. I can start that up. And I have my, I have to wait for it to start up. There we go. And I have my terminal for my super secret project. Uh, you'll note, not surprising at this point, neither the letter to grandma nor the business plan documents are in this security domain. So that's pretty neat. I'll close that. Uh, one last thing to look at is, the integration with the 
excuse me, the Hunix uh, operating system or environment. Uh, so Cubes comes with a Hunix gateway and workstation virtual machine by default. And Hunix is a pair of operating system images meant to run in VM environments to create a client environment that routes all network traffic through the Tor network, with no risk of applications leaking data through non-Tor network paths. And it's a great fit with Cubes because Cubes makes it so easy to configure which network service VM a particular app VM routes through. So you can see there's a Hunix gateway VM that's running as a service VM. And there's a Hunix workstation template, which we have based this Anon Hunix domain on. So I can launch the Tor browser in that. And this is running in the Anon Hunix domain. Uh, and now anything that happens in this VM, this Anon Hunix security domain, is routing through the gateway that will only allow traffic out through the Tor network. Uh, so if I go to say, what is my IP address.com? That's going out through this IP address here, uh, which I can confirm is not my home IP address. Um, this looks like some ISP in another country, not in the United States where I am right now. Um, so that's nice because again, this is just as integrated with uh, everything else as any other security domain. And again, the nice thing about actually routing all of the traffic through a gateway that can only route out through the Tor network is nothing that I do in uh, any other application in this domain, say a terminal. You know, if I wget www.google.com, uh, wget doesn't know anything about uh, Tor or uh, going through Tor sockets it's just using the system network libraries. And in this case, there we go. Uh, so it downloads Google, and it actually thinks I'm apparently in Germany right now because it sent me to google.de. But again, that's what we expect from Tor, right? I'm, I'm going through some exit node probably uh, in or around Germany. And there's no way that uh, I can leak information out a different network path because of the way that all of the network settings are set up between these VMs and into the Hunix gateway. So again, you know, nice thing about the VM model, separate Tor router setup, uh, is that nothing in this VM can connect except through Tor. And it's really convenient that it's just working out of the box like that. So that's about it for now. Uh, there's a lot of good information on the Cubes website explaining more about how things work and what you can do with Cubes, uh, including creating a Windows VM if you need to run Windows applications in their own secure compartments. Uh, and the Cubes team have really done a good job of building enough functionality into its utilities and this DOM0 environment to really make it practical to implement compartmentalized security and use it on a day-to-day -day basis. So I hope this has been helpful, uh, or at least interesting to learn a little bit about Cubes and see how it works. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.